A new air defense radar system is undergoing testing on White Sands Missile Range to ready it for later integrated testing with the Navy this fall. The Joint Land Attack Cruise Missile Defense Elevated Netted Sensor System, or JLENS, is an advanced radar system that is intended for use by the Army, Air Force, and Navy as part of a larger air and missile defense network. Essentially, uh, in simple terms, uh, JLENS is an elevated radar platform which is uh, specifically designed to uh, uh, track and uh, uh, defeat uh, uh, land attack cruise missiles. The objective of the system is to provide a long-range radar system that can detect small, low-flying targets like cruise missiles, as well as other airborne threats, so air defense systems can engage them sooner and with more accuracy. Radar works by sending out radio waves into the air. When the waves hit something, like an aircraft, they bounce off, reflecting back to the radar system and allowing the system to determine where the aircraft is. Unfortunately, other objects like tall buildings, hills, and mountains can block the radar waves and disrupt or limit that radar. Cruise missiles are designed to take advantage of this limitation by flying low to the ground long routes that allow them to hide behind terrain. What the aerostat allows you to do is get above the ground clutter. Uh, the whole objective of this system is to provide protection for ground assets that cannot see through mountains or other forms of clutter. Using large blimp-like balloons called aerostats, JLENS seeks to counter the threat of low-flying missiles and aircraft by taking a powerful surveillance radar to altitude, allowing the system to look down from heights of up to 10,000 feet and over nearby terrain, eliminating blind spots and extending the range of the radar. A surveillance radar is essentially uh, has a 360 degree capability. It kind of sees everything at once. Since the elevated radar must look down to detect and track missiles and aircraft, the radar also gets back lots of data on the ground beneath the airspace it's monitoring. For a normal radar, this would cause a lot of interference that could disrupt operations. JLIN's ground station, however, utilizes an advanced computer system that can filter out this ground clutter and leave the service members' view screens with a clear image of the air they are defending. Once a target has been located, a targeting radar system in a second aerostat can then lock onto the target and feed that data to air defense weapon systems. These systems would then be able to engage and destroy the target. The fire control radar, which is very, very precise, uh, can see a long distance and uh, track targets and develop firing solutions to hand off to other um, uh, air defense platforms. To lift the radar, the aerostats need to have some serious lifting power. Obviously the radar, the cooling equipment, and some of the electronics that are associated with it are fairly heavy because they're obviously built to mill standards to withstand the military environment, a threat environment. So therefore it has to have enough lift to lift up a, a fair amount of weight. To achieve this lift, each aerostat must be very large, almost the size of a football field. Visible from main post, the JLIN site includes one aerostat, which will be interchangeably equipped with the surveillance or fire control radar, along with the JLIN's mobile mooring station that holds the aerostat in place, and the ground station composed of a data processing shelter, a signal processing shelter, and a communications and control station. The radar's long range, which covers an area larger than the state of New Mexico, allows it to monitor large operational areas, making the system valuable not only for the Army, but other services as well. Each service has different weapons and requirements, which JLINs must meet if it is to work, and so extensive integration testing is required. For this reason, a single JLINs aerostat has been brought to White Sands Missile Range. Over the next few months, the JLIN system components will be checked out and its systems tested to prepare it for integration with Naval Air Defense Systems and testing on White Sands Missile Range. This has been going good. Uh, the weather, when it holds, uh, helps out a lot. But uh, yeah, so far the test has been going good. We've been meeting all the objectives um, that have been set out for us. The Naval requirements are the reason why White Sands Missile Range was chosen for these tests. Along with its extensive military-controlled airspace, White Sands Naval Detachment provides the right environment for the integration of this joint system into naval operations. In addition to the experienced sailors the Naval Detachment brings to the table, the Navy also commands the Desert Ship, a specialized test bunker on White Sands that simulates a ship at sea. The Desert Ship allows tests like this to be conducted in a realistic environment, using the same systems and configurations that a ship has, but with the control and data collection needed for testing. 
As the system is still in the early stages of development, at this time it is expected for JLENS to be an ongoing presence on White Sands Missile Range for some time while the system is further developed and tested.